العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أفضل المرسلين وإمام المتقين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى أصحابه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن دعا بدعوته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقد من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما بدي أكون تركزوا لي اليوم على وانفعنا بما علمتنا هي أكثر شيء تركز عليها اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما uh, This talk it's last minute effort in fact I didn't even start with this talk last night والله العظيم uh, The reason for this talk is for all of, all of us to self reflect صرنا سنة ونص عم نتقل احنا يوميا أسبوعيا نصي Monday so we need to self reflect the past year and a half and decide for yourselves if there was a palpable change that you notice yourself. By that, I mean, I want, you, I want for all of us to find out if anybody close to you, for example, I'm talking to you, notice any change in you, in the way you do things, uh, the way you show up, the way you talk, the way you act. Are you any different as a person than the person that was last year? Do you smile more? Do you... Uh, are you more patient? Are you more pleasant? Are you happier? Are you friendlier? Any change at all you notice in your own life or has anyone told you that you changed some bad habits that you, he did not like or he or she or your spouse, for example, did not like some things that you noticed changed? Was there any change over the past 18 months that we've been meeting? That's basically the, the lecture I wanna, I wanna talk about today because I want to, everyone to self-reflect. Are we really benefiting or are we just wasting time? Basically, we're not really wasting time, but you know what I mean. So I prepared my talk before I spoke to, uh, before uh, Amira talked to me this afternoon. And I wanted to make it personal for each one. Each one self-examine yourself and keep the answers to yourself. So let's go for this journey and let's see what happens. But before we do so, like Maria has said, please mute all your mics because any mic can, could cause distraction. Number one. Number two, please have a notepad ready to write any questions and any ideas that may benefit the group. Is if, if there's something that we should change, in your opinion, please write it down and suggest it at the end of the talk. Please write down your questions, ask them at the end of the talk. I promise to answer them to the best of my ability. And if I cannot answer them, I'm sure Madiha will, will, will back me up. She's got my back, Madiha. If neither one of us knows the answer, we promise we will look it up and circle back with you. I encourage you to stay engaged with the topic and ask questions, please, at the end. <clears throat> Remember, there's no stupid questions. The, the, and only the brave ones ask the questions on behalf of the other people that are embarrassed to ask. So there's no stupid questions. We only learn. We learn more when we ask questions, in fact. We are all students of knowledge, and we all ask uh, questions and learn that way, you know? And with that, I will start, inshallah. So these are things, just mute your mic, ask questions, write them down, any suggestions, and let's go. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I titled the talk, 2022, A Transformational Year. <clears throat> I'll start by reminding you that we, back in 2019, we chose, as a group, we chose, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ as the slogan that best represents what our OIS stands for. And that the purpose of our weekly lecture is to learn more about the attributes of Allah uh, and the life of the Messenger. That was the mission that we went on. So we can emulate his beloved Prophet and please Allah by drawing closer to his Prophet through our actions, community outreach, and to help improve the negative image that Islam enjoys. Isn't that what we agreed on? That's what we agreed on. I'm sure you all were there. So that's what we agreed on, right? I mean, I don't see anybody, so I assume that it's, it's uh, affirmative. Confirm, you know, I'm confirming that with you guys. I am glad that we chose وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ as the slogan for the ROS because it most represents what we stand for and what we strive to emulate by taking the prophets as our model. <clears throat> so far, since we started in June of 2019, we organized four or five public feedings. I forget, I think it was four public feedings. We did a closed drive 
we brought the clothes down to Jersey City, south somewhere by uh, South Jersey, I forget where. Uh, and we also held the large garage sale at the CBA to benefit the Syrian orphans in Turkey. I believe we raised over $6,000. We sent it with the Murad to help the refugees, the, the orphans from Syria. And the ladies topped that off, but just found out today that they did the garage sale last week. That was also successful. Not too bad for such a small group and for like a year and a half. But you know, and I know that we could do better than that as a group, honestly. I know COVID put a damper on everything, but still that's not an excuse. We can do more than we achieved. Although this is a good achievement, but we can do more. I mean, I, I think you agree with that. So we started ROS in June of 2019, 18 months exactly today. We hosted amazing speakers. We tackled some amazing topics. I had fun, I learned a lot of things that I'm sure you learned too. I learned a lot of things from you guys actually, and from the esteemed guest speakers that we hosted. I am sure you agree with that. So you guys learned a bunch from what I hear. Uh, but you wanna know something though, really? Here's the ugly truth. It doesn't really matter how much fun we had, and it doesn't really matter how much we learned or how amazing those guest speakers were. There's no benefit from anything that we did in the past 18 months. In fact, I would argue that we have wasted a year and a half of our lives and we did not benefit one iota or made any difference in ourselves or for others. We did not move one millimeter forward or shift any reality, not even a hair. We didn't shift a reality even a hair for Muslims. I mean, in fact, I would also argue that we cheated ourselves, cheated our guest speakers, cheated our families because we took time from our families, cheated the world by not contributing anything to anyone or, any, or to anything. If we did not do one very important thing, which is testing what we learned in real life, testing what we learned over the past 18 months in real life. We, somebody muted their phone, Adiha. Could you mute please somebody and muted their phone. The key to transformation, okay. <clears throat> We can call it testing, we can call it implementation, we can call it taking action. It doesn't matter, it's one result. The key to transformation of your ilm into amal, you have to transform your ilm into amal or turning your knowledge into reality is action. If it's is completely useless. In fact, you will be punished if you have ilm and don't do amal. Because Allah will punish you. He's gonna say, Allah's gonna hold you accountable. He's gonna say, I gave you all this knowledge. What did you do with it? And that, that really troubled, troubled me. You know, I was thinking about it for the past couple of days, and then last night I said, I better talk about it because that really didn't sit well with me. You knowledge is not important, action is much more important because otherwise you're not gonna make a difference anywhere with your knowledge. If you did not do anything, that means you did not learn anything. I had to tell you. But you wasted your time, you wasted our time, and everybody's effort if you did not apply any of the information you learned. We have all taken time off from our families and met every, every week for 18 months. <clears throat> With that said, I must tell you that I'm very, very proud of you guys You stuck it out for a year and a half because that separates you from the people that talk. You are the few that do versus the many that talk. So you stuck it out for 18 months. That's impressive, honestly. Some people dropped off here and there, but those were not the, the ones that we needed in the group, you know, anyway, so it was not a loss. So I'm really very proud of you because you are the few that do versus the many that talk. In other words, you walk the walk while others just talk. You are the true leaders and the movers and shakers in our small community. <clears throat> My goal this evening is not to depress you, but rather to impress you and impress upon you the importance of taking action. And to congratulate you for sticking out through these classes, through thick and thin, and that you can only, that can only mean one thing, which if I were to guess, I would say that you are not happy with the status quo. The fact that you stuck out, you're not happy with the status quo. You are not pleased with how passive Muslims are. And you are expect, expanding your knowledge 
and are looking for ways to add value and make a difference. And I will tell you that we can, we definitely can. And I, <clears throat> and here's a little, little metaphor. I'm gonna give you a little metaphor to prove that you can actually do that. I'm gonna give you something, I call it the golf metaphor. If you know, you know, if you watch people that play golf, they hold the, the club this way and they hit the ball. It keeps going, let's say it goes, goes to the water. He keeps trying, he keeps swinging. The harder he swings, the more he messes up. Then you have, I mean, Tiger Woods, the, the best in the world has a coach. Then you have a coach from a distance looking at him and watching his, his swing. And he just comes to him, he says, just adjust your shoulders just a little bit, just maybe like half an inch. And you know, just the club, just a hair, a little bit. You know, from, instead of this, just a little hair. And he swings and it goes in a completely different direction. In the distance, these little things that you think are small steps will make a huge difference in a distance because time, you know, it's like it's like a snow, snowball effect. You know, as as you shift a little bit, shift, it just goes in a completely different direction. And that's what you guys are doing. I mean, a year and a half later, I'm sure if we go back and reflect, and I want you to reflect with me, we have really uh, made a lot of changes, a lot of them are personal changes. And I want to see if somebody told you, you change, you, you don't get angry as much. You're more pleasant, you're using nicer words. You're smiling more, you're friendlier. You are more patient with me. You don't get mad at me, you're helpful. You know, a lot of things. I mean, as I'm doing that, that's why I said, please write notes for yourself. You don't have to share them with anybody. Did you really change anything? Did anything change in you and your family at work? Anything, there must be something. Because year and a half of, of good information, it's impossible not to change you if you really are serious about uh, you know, making a change. If you don't want to make a change, then <laughs> there's no, no, no sense. But if you really want to improve yourself and improve your environment and help Islam and help the image of Islam, then if you apply just a fraction of those lessons, just like I said with the metaphor, you will have noticed a change by now. So I want you to self-reflect, you know, as, as we've talking here, just, you know, think, think about these things, please. <clears throat> Did, did, did these uh, lessons have any impacts on your outlook on life? Positively impact your realities? or realities of the people in your life? Did you improve a relationship at home or at work and improve the image of Islam overall? Did you have a discussion with someone because the information that you learned, you were able to, to give them a better answer, you know, make the, give them better understanding of Islam. Did you hold conversation with people? Before, people used to avoid this conversation. Now you're armed a little bit with some information. Maybe you can take on a conversation. Maybe you could actually, or not stand for somebody who says something about Islam, you know? People used to hide the fact that they're Muslims. Were there any situations where, you know what, because of the knowledge that you have gathered over the year and a half, you were able to just, you know, take a stand or, or, or explain something better than before? So. These are things that you should think about yourself. Uh, how does that sound? Does that sound good? Okay, I, I can't see you. So I guess I'm gonna assume it's okay. It sounds These, good. Yeah, three, three types of people. I wanna talk to you, people, people learn differently. There are three types of people. I classify them, I classify them to three types. There are people who are visual, like men mostly. And that, that again, there's not one, one better than others. There's three types of people, when, reception mode they're called, you know, the way you learn either visual or auditory by hearing or sensory by palpation, by feely, touchy-feely kind of thing. So this is not good or bad. People are different and everybody learns different. And again, there's also overlap, they overlap. Most men happen to be visual. They need visual stimulation, you know? So the man, the caveman back in the days, he will not act till he sees a lion coming to eat his wife or his son or somebody, then he would act. So visual, men are really moved by visual learning. Men are visual learners. Women, on the other hand, they tend to be the, the, the feeling type, you know, they, they're rational, they, they think. Men just jump without thinking, you know, the forefront. Women are more cognitive, more rational, more thinker, you know, so they, they, they weigh things out better than men. Men just react. Women are more laid back and they think. There's no good and bad. Auditory people that like to hear things, you know, those people that study with the music playing in the background, there happen to be their mode of reception, their mode of learning is auditory. So sometimes, I'll be saying something, I may repeat it, it may sound like I'm repeating, but I'm repeating because when I talk to, let's say your, your visual your visual mode, your mode of learning is visual. If I say something like, you know, I move, it's dynamic, then you're gonna, you're gonna like it. People like people who are like them. You're gonna like that, you're gonna learn. But if somebody is sensory, 
they're completely alienated. So I would repeat the same thing in a different mode sometimes. I'm trying as best as I can. So I can appeal to the majority. You understand what I mean? So people who learn differently, visual, auditory, by hearing, they hear the words, some people listen to the words, men don't really listen, they just see things and they act. Women, more and more they thinkers, they think, they take it in, they think, they analyze more, you know? But that's, that's so I'm, you, I may sound like I'm repeating things, but I'm not really, uh, I'm doing it on purpose so I can appeal to everybody. Because, and, and then if, when you hear it, by the way, since they overlap, you can understand it visually, but when I talk in auditory mode, you can reaffirm it, you can understand it more, it gets deeper. So if you hear something twice, that's okay, you're learning at two different modes, that's fine too. As I said, the caveman does not react until he sees danger. He does not jump for defend his family until the lion comes and basically eats his son or something like that. So men tend to be more visual. Auditory people learn best by listening to words, commands, sounds. Those are the ones, as we said, that like spoken words, they pay attention to spoken words, not images as much, but they like the words more than images. They are the ones that study with their music in the background, as we said. And uh, the music, by the way, for those people, enhances uh, studying. My, my son, he always studies with music and I can't understand how he does that, but it has this learning for people who are auditory. Uh, the, these are the writers, the, you know, the, the musicians, they learn best by, uh, you know, hearing basically. So both men and women could be in this category, any category actually could be overlap. The sensory people are the touchy feely type, the sensitive learners, they call them. They are must, they must, you know, they must be moved. They must be touched and moved emotionally before they learn. If something doesn't interest them, they don't, they don't pay attention to it. So they must be moved emotionally, those sensory people, uh, before they learn, so in order to learn. Uh, if their emotions are not tantalized a little bit, they will not show any interest. They will dismiss the topic altogether. So they take it in, they analyze it. Okay, is this, am I gonna pay attention here or am I gonna check out? So basically those are sensory people. Women are more sensitive or more emotional than men. Women think before they react. While men act, then they think later. <laughs> You know, men go and buy a car, and then they go home and think, oh my God, did I make a good decision? Women analyze, should we buy a car? Do we need it? Do we not need it? So that's how it is. Men act and then think. Women think before they act. That's the big difference. And again, there's no good and bad. Anyway, both, they're both, okay. It's just different modes. Uh, okay, women think more before they act and think later, maybe sometimes, you know? So <laughs> there's overlap. I, I'm laughing because I remember something funny that happened today. But anyway, I'm talking to men in the, in the men in the group, especially the ones that have been married for 20 years or more. The ones that are broken in. As we get older, we realize that a happy wife means a happy life. So you guys want to be, you, it's better the more mode you have or the more we understand. Variety, variety is, 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 a, is a, a plus to have variety. You know, there's people say, you know, we want to be, the same, but variety actually makes things more fun, more interesting and spicy. So it's okay, but you have to be able to dance with both. You have to be able, if you know your wife is visual, you know, you cannot talk to her in sensory or, or the other or the vice versa, you know? So variety is power. It's not, it's not really uh, a liability, it's an asset, honestly. Okay, so that's, that's basically enough. So about this idea of, of teaching. So I'm gonna be able to, you know, say the thing sometimes, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Okay. If I feel I'm wasting your time by repeating myself, that could be one of these two things. Your mode of learning overlaps with the previous mode I just covered. You know, so you if you feel like you're not learning because you overlap, you have overlap in modes. And you're also a very smart person, but very patient. But you must be very patient also because I'm trying to deliver the same point to other people in the group. So if you're confused and do not understand what I said, I'll be happy to go over it again later. But let me just start now. Three letters, lam, meme, and ain. To check three words, علم, عمل, لمع. Three letters, in the same way, three words, lam, and meme, and ain. In the same way, علم, عمل, لمع. لا نفع بعلم من دون عمل. مين في حدا عم يسمع صوت مديح؟ Somebody, I hear somebody either coughing or something. في حدا uh, Amira, you can enter the mic. Could you mute it, please? Because that really distracts me, throws me off. If you notice, I keep going back and forth. Allah Khalikon, is the Hadda Tarek the microphone on? Please mute it because I can hear it here. The, the people who speak, who's talking, hears more of the distraction than the other ones. 
I think you probably might not hear it, but here it's kind of loud, the distraction. So if you are not muted, please mute your microphone. Okay, so I was saying three letters. Because of the distraction, honestly. For you to shine, you really have to commit to action. If you don't take action, your information is useless. Keep it to yourself. You will be punished for having information and acting upon it, by the way. وإن لن لا نعمل بعملنا سيحاسبنا الله يوم لا نفعل أي علم ولا أي عمل إذا ما هذا لا نفعل لا علم لا العمل يعني if if you don't really get a result what good is all this thing that we're you know talking about if you're not gonna put it to action it's all useless يعني هل الدنيا ما فيها وقت كثير واحد ضوع يتعلم يتعلم why are you learning if you're not gonna put it to use because it's really <laughs> يعني somebody learn some people uh, in, a, in a group, they learn because they want people to say, oh, he has a lot of knowledge. But that's not really that's selfish. That is not really smart. Anyway, I don't want to go into that. لاحظوا هنا بأن العمل هو الذي يقلب الأحوال ومن دون العمل لا فائدة من العلم ومستحيل أن يكون هناك أي لمع إذا ما في عمل يعني. ثانيا. Uh, okay. Well, that's enough for that one, I guess. Uh, Okay. The other thing I was going to say is people do not really remember whether visual or sensory or auditory people do not remember really what, I'm, what you talk about for more than two weeks, but they will never forget how they feel as a result. It's how everything touches you. If, it does, if the information I'm telling you now, you're not going to, you're probably going to forget it. If it doesn't move your heart, if it doesn't touch your heart, then it's completely you're not, you're useless. You're not going to, so people will forget what you say, but they will never forget what you, how you make them feel. So hopefully I'm trying to touch, appeal to your heart for you to do your own homework to see if you change, not me, not anybody. So this is for you, not for anybody else. <clears throat> so I wanna tell you, I'm gonna tell you maybe a story, a couple of stories through the, the whole, through the lecture here. So to make the point even, uh, clear for for you. Okay. Abu Huraira reported, radiallahu anhu reported that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Inna Allah la yand la la yanzru ila qulubikum, ila sulurikum, wa ila swarikum, wa amwalikum, wa lakin yanzru ila qulubikum wa amalikum. Inna Allah la yanzru ila swarikum, wa amwalikum, wa lakin yanzru ila qulubikum, wa amalikum." That's, that's important. Verily, Allah does not look at your appearance, at your appearance or wealth, but rather He looks at your hearts and at your actions. Sahih Muslim. Yes, this has its own place, but they also have Abu, Abu Raja uh, Al Butardi. You can ask Abu Raja Al Butardi. In English, they have said. Amran bin Amran bin Hassan radiallahu anhu came out once to us wearing a nice garment interwoven with small amount of silk that we never saw him wear before or afterwards he said allah's messenger said when allah has favored someone with bounty he likes to see the effort of his bounty and the servant allah, allah jamil basically that's what that says i keep getting i should have muted my phone i guess i keep getting reception had on farooq I get again messages on WhatsApp Faru and other people, so that keeps beeping. I apologize. Okay, since I feel it, I feel that like the energy of the group is down. I mean, I know you guys are not talking, but I want to play with you a little game. I cannot see you, but I feel that the energy is going down. So, in fact, some of you are about to fall asleep. I feel so. Let us <laughs> let's use English grammar to bring the energy back up again. And I want you to play with me and honestly play. I mean, I don't hear you. I don't, you know, you're muted, so I don't hear anybody. So feel free to, to, to be yourself. I want you all to, to please play along. You know, you know how with English language uses the same syntax, you know? So if I say, for example, if I say the word lips, you know, lip for singular, I want to say, shout out, 
So if I say lip, you shout out, I don't hear you, but you shout out lips, you know? So lip is the singular, lips is the plural. So if you're ready to go, I'm gonna go, okay? I'm gonna say the word and right away, don't think too much right away, just say the plural. I'll say singular, you say the plural, okay? Car, tree, house, mouse. Did you guys say mouses? Be honest, did somebody say mouses or did you say mouse? Yeah. So anyway, I, I wanted to trick you guys. Here's a little story, this very important message. You know, I'm gonna tell you a story called the three little fish, not fishes, like Vinny would say, you know, like uh, Rocco or Vinny would say, three little fish, fish one fish, here's the story. There was three fish in a small lake. One fish was brilliant. The other fish was smart. And a third fish was stupid. One, one brilliant, one smart, one stupid, three fish. And one day a fisherman came to the lake and started casting his net. So the brilliant fish said, it's time to head to the sea because the lake is too small and we will get caught in this net eventually. So he left, the brilliant fish just left, went to the river and down to the sea. The second fish or the smart fish thought, hey, the most important, the most intelligent fish in the lake left and he's heading to the sea. I must head to the sea as well. That's the, the smart ones. He said, okay, that, that, the, the smartest one, the brightest one left. So let me, let me follow him. So the third fish or the stupid fish disagreed and said to the smart fish, come on, man, you are, you are overreacting. It's a big lake and it's a very small net. We should enjoy what we have because nothing much has changed. Let's just chill at the bottom here. Nothing bad will happen to us. That's the stupid fish told the smart fish, you know? So the smart fish disagreed and he headed to the sea anyway. He didn't listen to the stupid fish. He just headed to the sea. He's like, the, the brilliant one left, so I better leave. So he left. Sure enough, the stupid fish got caught in the net. As the fisherman was frying the stupid fish in the frying pan, the stupid fish then said, if I ever get back to the lake, I am going to listen to the brilliant fish and to the smart fish and I'm going to head for the sea. It, it's not the same thing that some people do. Sometimes they wait and wait, and then when they get, you know, they get in trouble, they wish they, things were different, but it's too late already. The world is a really a tough place, you know, and there's no, doesn't leave room for stupid decisions, unfortunately. We have to be quick on our feet and we have to act quickly while we can and while we still have the chance. <clears throat> Here are some lessons from this story. A couple of lessons I'm gonna give you. N number one, lesson number one, grow and enjoy the journey. That's number one. Do not be the stupid fish. Surround yourself with smarter people than you and grow with them. Life is a journey in the ocean of knowledge. So sail and expand your horizons. Don't be afraid to, to, to make mistakes because life is not meant to be restricted to your limited knowledge and to stupid friends. Number, that's the first lesson. So grow and enjoy the journey. Second lesson, you have a higher purpose in life. Never let the dark forces stop you from pursuing your purpose in life. And do not let them stop you from growing to your full potential. You are a brilliant person who can add tremendous value to the world. And the world needs you. You are not just filling space. You have been created for a bigger purpose. You are a big deal, really. <clears throat> Allah creates people for a reason. Allah does not create people for the sake of creating. Allah knows the people he creates. Children are much closer to Allah and they act with their God-given innate intelligence or fitra, fitra or innate intelligence. It's God-given to them. Children act you know, openly because that's, that's how they are created with fitra. As we grow older through the obstacles of life and life throws us back and forth, we navigate through its turns and twists, we get older, we drift away from our fitra. <clears throat> and our actions become conditioned based on unique life experiences. And along the way, we forget who we are and why we were created in the first place. So my question to each and every one of you is, who are you really? 
Have you forgotten why you were created? That, the, that question deserves to be pondered upon, honestly. Who are you and have you forgotten why you were created in the first place? We all need to revisit who we are as children and what we have become. You know, the difference between a child and, and, and an adult is if a child is walking and straining, he sees a puddle, he sees a puddle, he jumps in both feet in the puddle and he, you know, rolls in it and he gets wet, he doesn't care. An adult, a crabby old man, an adult, he goes, he sees the lake, he steps in it, he curses the lake. He's like, damn, and he curses. That's the difference. So they become crabby, they become rough around the edges. They forget to play, they forget to be children. You know, we're all big children, actually, disguised as adults, but we really, every one of us has a child in him, personality. Uh, I still haven't grown up yet. I still act all the time foolishly, but, uh, but everyone really has few characters. Have, the character has facets, child, teenage, and then adult. Adult is the, the facade you put on to act smart, act proper, but that's polluted. That is not really who you really are. You, you, what you really are is a child that's just willing to play and, willing, and curious to know everything. So you really need to get in touch with, with the child that you were and have you changed and why have you changed? You know, those are questions that you should ask yourself and maybe ponder over them if you, if you like. <clears throat> the best time to find yourself again is before Fajr, before you go deep into your childhood, into childhood consciousness, you need quietude. You need to, to have quietude and cannot have, afford to have distractions. Do that and see how much better you feel as, as, you know, as the time goes. You, your adult will be much happier when you do that. You know, your adult self or facade that you have will be much happier if you really have khalwa, yani, between you and yourself and God. And usually before Fajr, it's the best time. There's nothing, no noise, nothing. I love that time. It's the most special time of the day. Try that. If you're the type that uh, can wake up, fine. If you're not, you should learn to wake up in early in that morning hour and then go back to sleep if you have to make up for it. When you reconnect, when you connect with your unconditional innate intelligence that you once had as a child, there's nothing, it's priceless, honestly. A Muslim must be childlike adult. Muslim must be childlike adult. They must be curious. They must be inviting. You have to be fun. You have to be childlike, curious. You want to invite them to Islam just by being real. Children are real. Adults are, are, are funny. So, so Muslim must be a childlike adult who is inviting not a crabby old person who's repulsive, who just puts people away, you know? Most, most Muslims mean, but that, that is really not a good message. Islam is, 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 is inviting, Islam is welcoming. It's not like we're in a hotel and there's no vacancy, you know? That's how, how people act like. We're in a hotel, we're in, and no, vac no vacancies, and you're all gonna burn to hell. That is not really good advertisements. We should really think, think about these things. These are the deeper issues, actually. They seem like little things, but those are really, the most important issues in my opinion. Allah created you for a reason. He chose you out of 300 million other possibilities, you know, siblings, brothers and sisters. You are one of 300 million. There has to be a reason why he chose you and not the other 300 million possibilities, right? Really think about that for a second. Why you, why did Allah choose you? I can tell you with certainty, you are not created to fill space. You are not here to fill space. Your job is to rediscover that reason because once you do, you will have connected with your playful self and childhood curiosity, which you dis dis disconnected and very deep as you became an adult, as a boring adult, I should say, as you became a boring adult, you disconnected that and you buried it deep inside because of the mandated do's and don'ts that society imposes on you, which are all phony and all man-made. You know, they're not really innate. Futra is God-made. These do's and don'ts are man-made. So you know that you, you can choose as easily. You don't have to think much about it. I am telling you, these phony adult behavior, ha behavioral habits are known as social norms. Do you know why they are called social norms? <laughs> because the normal person is boring person. Nobody wants to be around boring people, right? I mean, it's called social norm. The norm, the norm is, is the boring adult. Nobody wants to be around boring, boring adults. You want to be around people. Talat Abaza, I use Talat Abaza all the time. Man, he's always bouncing with energy. It's always fun. It's fun to be with him. He doesn't act his age. He's like a 10 year old kid, but it is so much fun to be with him. Anytime you go with him, he's always happy, always smiling. 
he has childlike curiosity. He hasn't actually grown up, in my opinion. He's like still eight, entrapped an eight-year-old body. He is amazing. People like him are much more, I'd, I'd rather spend time with him than intellectual people who just put up, put a facade and they're boring, like, you know, professors in college kind of. Salat is playful. He's, he's real. He lives life. He lives it to the fullest. I love people like that. So you have to be childlike, yes, to, be, to be inviting, to be, to be fun so people can be around you. If you're boring and you put facade and you act, you know, you rose up and you act like you're hot, I don't want to say S-H-I-T, then people don't want to be near you. Nobody wants to be near you. You're not fun. So leave that at where, where you know, at this, we'll leave it at this point. We talked about people, personalities. I said that there are mainly two types of people. Now, we're not talking about the modes of learning. We talked about one time, I talked to you before about two types of people. There are people I call the dark people or the blue people who see everything dark and blue. Everything is gloomy, everything depressing, everything, oh, that's all the focus is. Whatever your focus goes, energy flows. I said that before. I told you, do not think of the color blue. And right away, everybody's thinking blue. I just told you, do not think of the color blue because your focus went to it, your energy is going to fly to it. So those people are always, uh, they're always moping around. They're always complaining. There, nobody wants to be with them. That is not fun. That is not good advertisement for Islam. So I call these people the dark or the blue people, dark people, let's say. When these people enter room, they come into room, it feels like the lights went out. <laughs> the lights get dimmer a little bit because the dark cloud fills the room. When they come in, they drag all their problems. They drag all the complaints, all the things. They drag it into room. They ruin the mood of the room. These people dim the lights and they suck the energy out of the room. People, <laughs> these depressing kind of people, they always have long, sour faces. They always have long faces. They're not, not smile. Gloomy outlook on life. Always complaining about everything and what's not right and what's wrong with everything. Other people run away from these people, by the way. Or they just, when they see them, like, oh my God, he came. But let me, let me smile. A fake smile. You know, looking for somebody else to distract them and just leave them. People don't want to be with boring people. Because you know what? They bore the hell out of you. So... That's the first type, the blue people, the dark people. The other type is the sunshine people, I call them. They bring joy to any place they go. Talat Abaza is a great example of that. When these people enter room, the lights suddenly go on. They get brighter and the energy goes higher through the roof. The sunshine people have magnetic personalities and they are so charismatic that everyone wants to be around them. Their charisma just over, overfills the room. A perfect example of such person is Talat, of course, and also my late uncle, Amo, Amo, I don't know if you know him. Some people, a lot of you knew him. He always had a gentle smile on his face. I never seen him not smile. Always, always had a smile on his face. And he always radiated with joy and with hope. Whenever he came into a room, all of the problems somehow seemed to fade away. We always think, everything's going to be okay. Everything's, they take a nice deep breath. Yadik is here, so everything is fine. That's these people, that's the power, the presence these people have. So all the problems fade away and his presence radiates love and happiness throughout the whole room. And you just, just think everything's gonna be okay. You always, you know, he's here, alhamdulillah, now everything is fine. That's how everybody says, not me, not because of my uncle, but everybody who knew him knows, knows that about him. He had such presence that was natural and comforting and he was childlike till he died. He was 84 years old when he died, but he was like a 10 year old kid in his heart because I know him. When his name is mentioned, all I see is a big smile on his face, his big round face with big smile. That's all I remember him because I have never seen him not smile. While if you think yourself, these other, other people with sour puss face, you know, I see like, they're like smiling all the time. Every time you, you see them like, man, I don't want to be with this guy. You know, that's, that's natural. That's people don't like, people like people who are like them. People like people who they want to be around with. Then nobody wants to be with a, with a sour puss with somebody who complains about every little thing because life is hard. We don't want to hear somebody else bitch about everything. You know, we, I'm sorry I used that word. That's not a bad word. I don't, you know, we don't want to hear somebody complain about things because we have enough problems. Everybody has enough problems of their own. And I'll tell you, share with you one more thing. Just off the thing. One time I was in a Tony Robbins seminar. We had people, maybe we were 5,000 people, four or 5,000 people. He, they, he said, anybody here wants to commit suicide? People come there at the end of their rope, basically. So maybe about 10 people, I forget how many, 10 people raise their hands. You know, they want to commit suicide because their life problems are much bigger than them. You know, one guy I know, he wanted, 
he invested so much money in the stock market, he made money. So he told all his family, they came to him actually. They said, please invest, here's take our money. All their life savings, like 10, 15 families, put them in the stock market and all crashed. So they all lost their wealth. They kind of went upset with him, but he was upset with himself. One guy, one guy, his wife left him, Australian guy left him, I remember. And he wanted to kill himself. He had actually cut his wrist. His wrist was, you know, not fresh, but a couple of weeks old. But he really had tried to hang himself. He couldn't, whatever. So somebody dragged him to sleep. So people with a lot of problems. So maybe about 10 people raised their hand. Out of 5,000 people, four or 5,000 people, I forget how many. He, so he said, okay, stand up. They all stood up, all these people. And they kind of, a couple of them shared their stories, whatever. He said, okay, let's see here in this room. I'm going to ask you to take this metaphor. This is not real. Take all your problems, put them in a brown bag. And put it. Would you be willing? Everybody put their problem in a, in a brown bag. Would you be willing to take somebody else's bag? They all sat down. None of them. None of them said I will because you don't know what other people are dealing with. You think you have problems. Your word is yourself because everybody is egocentric. Everybody is self-centric. But you do not know what the other people are dealing with. So your problems are too common. They're not anything new. These people that you're talking to, they already have problems. They don't want to hear more of your problems and your complaints. So I'm, I'm seeing, <laughs> it seems like I'm going hard on these people because this is something that you wanna teach your kids. You wanna teach your kids because you want your kids to be successful. You want your kids to be the center of attention. Whatever, any party they go to, if he goes anywhere, everybody runs to him. I've, I've been with him socially, Americans, I'm not talking Circassians, because he, people feel good around him. Talat Abaza, if you go with him, you can do anything with Talat, anything. You'll be happy, you'll have, you'll have fun, anything. You can go shopping with him, you can go hiking with him, you, anything you do with Talat, because he brings himself to everything. He brings joy to everything because he himself is joy. So is Amwaydik. So those are the sunshine people. The other people are the dark blue people. Everything is doom, gloom, and everything is like, you know, doom day. So just, just pay attention to these things because these things are advertisement for Islam. Your beingness, the way you're being, speaks louder than anything you say. So that's why action is more important than knowledge. So that's that. <clears throat> I think I, should, I don't need notes because I can go naturally better than notes, but I'm confusing my, myself with notes. Anyway, so you can actively choose to be either one of these two, either the dark people or the sunshine people. And it's the choice of yours. Okay, the third lesson we learned from this thing, actually, this with the two lessons, I'll review them real quick. Okay, so let's see the two lessons. Okay, it's far, far. Okay, we said one of them is grow. I think grow and enjoy the journey. The second one is you have a higher purpose. Find your purpose in life as a child. Like when you were a child, you were dreaming and everything. As you became an adult, you became boring and you became limited and, and the social norms just constricted you, boxed you. So break those, break those chains and dream as a child in the morning before Fajr. That's when you really go deep inside and, 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 and remember how you were as a child. Remember how joyous and how fun you were and now how boring you became. I'm just saying you, meaning everybody, including me, okay? I'm not saying that one particular person. When I say you, means me included. And awal wahid, yani. Honestly, this is just for all of us. We're, we're all brothers and sisters here. We're not, I'm not, you know, I'm not sharing my wisdom. I'm just sharing with you how I see things. And I mean, I mean me too. I'm not just saying you. I, I fall into these things sometimes too. Okay, now, the third lesson that we're going to learn from this, you have no time to waste. See, one of the signs of, of the end of time is that years pass quickly. As you notice, we do Salah Jum'ah. Before you know, not the second Jum'ah. Then we do the class. Before you know, it's the second Monday. Yeah, and the time is flying like crazy. As we get older, it goes faster. So that's a sign of the end of time too, by the way. That's the side note. So do not wait till it's too late like the stupid fish. The only time you have control of is now. Actually, now that was the second one. Now, <laughs> the, second. the only time you have control is the present moment, okay? The past is gone and the future has not arrived yet. So you cannot really worry about the past or plan for the future. You can only act now. This is the only time you can make any change. The other ones is just delusions. The past is guilt driven and it's wasted, wasted time. You can learn from it maybe, that's the most you can do. But the future hasn't come. There's no, no need to worry about it. Kilmet waham, wow, meem. Kilha ahraf mufarraga. Waham is qad, yani, malo malo zoom, waham. You know, so do not worry about the future because you don't know if you're going to live to see the future anyway. So uh, the past is for people. Uh, the past is for most people. The past for most people is filled with regrets. Usually the future with fear of the unknown. While the present is now is filled with opportunity. This is the only time you can make any difference in anything. 
So that's the third lesson. The fourth lesson, you are special and you are not created to just fill space, as we said. Too many people are, are just filling space in this world. They're just living day by day. They're just going through the motions. And that's really sad. They are of no benefit to anyone or to anything because they, they're looking for their own interests. They're not, you know, they just want to go through the day passively. That means they're not looking to help anyone. They're not looking to make any difference. So those people are useless to the society because they are self-centered. So they can say, yeah, well, let me get by, let me get by. That's it. That is not a way to live. You are created for bigger than that. Wallahi al-Azim, everybody. You are one of 300 million other possibilities. So that means Allah has, has, has a message for you, has a purpose for you in life. You can't just live passively and, and, and just let life happen. Life is coming at you while you're just reacting. You're just dodging and reacting. That, that's, not really, that's not really life. You want to do something because the time is, is passing. You know, the, it's flying by actually. Okay, we said too many people are just filling space and are of no benefit to anyone or to anything. I would argue that atheists, atheists, the people that don't believe in God are just filling space. Non-believers are usually, those atheists are usually takers. They just take. They don't, they don't put themselves out. They don't give. The joy is in giving. Taking is selfish. To love someone is to give someone. Love is a verb. You can't just even say love. Love is to give. To take is, is being selfish. You've taken. So if you love someone, you will die for that person. The joy is in giving, not in taking, not in receiving. Always the upper hand is better than the lower hand, right? You're always giving. So the joy is in giving. So people who are atheists usually are takers. They don't, they don't believe in anything. They don't believe there's consequence to anything. So like, okay let me take as much as i can they become gluttonous they about life i'm talking not just food they take 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 and they don't give back the love and the joy is in giving back and that's what you guys made up you, you all of you all of you if you're not givers you wouldn't stick it out for a year and a half i know you're all amazing Wallahi azim, I, I, I say that sincerely you are people that actually the very few people less than one percent of people actually follow through. You follow through for a year and a half. So that tells me that you have burning desire to make a difference. Otherwise you would just fade away like us. Many people that came, we kind of forced them to come into, I talked, bugged them to like come. They attended one, one talk, two talks and they dropped. Not you. That means you really are looking for something. You're really looking to, to make this world a better place. When you die, people, people can, you know, can say, well, you know, he or she was a wonderful person instead of saying, <laughs> Or, uh, sort of, you know, taking, taking, screwing me or cheating me or something. That's atheist. Atheist. I have a lot of friends who are atheists, by the way, so I know how they think. Anyway, so you are not one of those. You have no time to waste. You have a responsibility to make a positive change in the world. So please get busy. I will tell you a real story from Saudi Arabia. Uh, who is Gandhi? Is Gandhi there? If Gandhi is there, he knows. And Firas, I don't know if Firas, Firas knows. We went to Jersey. Maybe about a month ago, Adham, uh, Adham made us later on. We didn't, he didn't go to the khutbah. The Imam, uh, Mustafa, uh, Abu Saif, the, the guy that was here, Bilan, Rahna al Jersey with him. L listen to the story. He, uh, the judge told him, the judge who actually was present at this thing told him, Fiwahid Saudi, a very rich Saudi businessman, Saudi, Mad Zawaj. He's old man, Mad Zawaj, and he's busy with business and he's got many companies. He'd never get married. His younger brother, was married and he died. His younger brother has three boys, but those are, they're all adults. This guy is old, obviously. They're all adults now. One is in Germany or England and the other one is in France or so. They're all out, outside of Saudi Arabia, except one. Two, two, one in, I think one in England, one in Germany or something, and the other guy in Saudi Arabia. So now he died, this guy, this rich guy. He has no wife, no kids, nobody, no relatives. He only had one brother who's dead. So the only people that will get money from his estate are his nephews three of them so he hasn't talked to his nephews they haven't spoke for like more than 10 years so all of a sudden this judge now this guy does the judge has to distribute the wealth that this guy left so they called one of the guy that he called the guy he's like how is your uncle how's your he's like he was always busy he's never like he's just uncle by name he doesn't do anything they didn't say anything good about him all three of them but then alone the judge alone you know what you are the only uh heir that he has and he left you a fortune. They said, how much? He said, 450 million real Saudi. 400, I don't know how much in dollars. That must be more than dollar. 450 million real Saudi. So each one get 150 million in a heartbeat. Without even expecting it. They got called in the river. 
سو سو هي سو الجج ناو از جيف ذيم كل واحد 150 مليون اجوا عليه بحضنهم دون ما يكون عنده خبر يعني لا اسمي اند ذي دونت لايك ذير انكل ذي سي او هيز ا جيرك هي نيفر ريلي كيرد فور اس ان 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 ذي وين سو قال لهم لما قال لهم بده يطعمهم كل واحد 150 مليون تغيرت النغمه صار صار واحد يقول والله هي واز اوكي هي واز نايس يعني كاز بيكوز ذي ار جيتن ماني 150 مليون ريال يعني ذاتس بيج ماني سو so, الجج قال لهم قال لهم اوكي بما انه ما عنده حدا هالمسكين هذا وتعب وما عنده لا مرا ولا اولاد مرته ولا حدا يعمل عمل خير شو رايكم والله العظيم هيك حتى الامام شو رايكم تعملوا كل واحد تبرعوا شي مليون ريال 150 اجا تبرعوا مليون كل واحد مشان نعمل له شيء يكون عنده اجر مستمر يعني مثل جامع نعمل له جامع صار خجاري يعني شيء شغله اول واحد قال اول واحد تحجج قال والله انا مرتي مريضه اولادي بده شو عندنا بيت دفعات على البيت وكذا كذا ما رضي اول واحد ما رضي الثاني قال له والله انا اولادي صغار بدي ادرسهم ما ادرسهم بدي اشوف ما رضي. They didn't even pay 1 million. He, they just got all of a sudden 150 million dropped in their lap each. الثالث قال شوف الثالث شو قال قال ليش انا بدي استاوي له؟ هو لما كان عايش ما استاوي لحاله why should I pay for him؟ So now listen to the lessons that you're going to get from this thing. واحد ما رضي يتحجج انه اولاده ومرته بدي شو عنده عنده مشاكل عنده مورجج عنده كذا الثاني قال اولادي بدي اروح على المدرسه والله بدي ادرسهم في الجامعه مالي فاضي لهم. الثالث قال له Bluntly, Allah, I'm not going to pay. He didn't even pay himself. Who am I going to do? Why should I do it? So listen, what we're going to learn from this one here. <coughs> okay. So the main lesson from this story that you learn, أكتشي أهم شيء تعلم. Do good deeds for yourself, by yourself, while you're alive. Do not count on your children to do it for you because they are less motivated to do it. هلا في ناس بس ما بيتبرعوا هلا بيقول يلا بتسوي بسمة 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 صاري. سكت قلبيه بيموت بتامل ان اولاده يدفعوا عنه it doesn't happen that way your kids are not really uh, uh, you're not they're not associated with that they're not really uh, motivated to pay on your behalf if you didn't pay why should they if you don't pay انت اذا ما دفعت شو رح يدفع عنك انه يعني it doesn't doesn't make sense so do good deeds for yourself by yourself while you can تبرع بالجامع اعمل صدقه جاريه اعملوا تشاريتي مثل عم تساوي البنات الله يعطيكم العافيه يعني do things for yourself. Do not count on your family or your children because they are not as connected as you are to to your يعني قدرك يعني أخذك يعني they don't they don't really see the picture. They don't see the reason to, to donate. If you don't if you don't pay when you are able to, why should they pay on your behalf? يعني so don't count on your children or anyone to do good deeds in your name. When you die, three things will follow you to the grave. When each one of us die, three things will follow you to live. Two will return. And one will stay. Your wealth, your loved ones will return. Your deeds will stay with you in the grave. So three things will follow you when you die. Your family, your wealth, and your deeds, whether good or bad. Two of them will return, which are your family and your wealth, and your deed will stay with you in the grave by yourself. So you're really all alone. We are working here together as a group, but we each walk alone at the end of the day. ما حدا مسؤول عن حدا يعني we all have our own journey and we all are responsible for ourselves first then others <coughs> the people who love you most like your spouse and children maybe will cry for a couple of days and they get sucked back into life in dunya and distraction of the dunya you know they may cry a couple of days because they feel sad but then life just there's life has a way of just take sucking you back into this tribulations and trials يعني كلها معمعة حياتك تشدك يعني so So you know the most the people that love you the most will cry maybe a couple of weeks for you and that's it. And I lament Matt Abu Allah Hamdulillah Allah Yadig Allah because I thought my life would end when Amma Yadig I was really close to my uncle Yadig when he died I thought my life would never be the same. Malla I rarely think about him honestly. That's how life is you know. So do for yourself before and don't count on others to do for you. You know basically that's the lesson. Uh, we're we're all left alone in the grave by ourselves. Your family doesn't follow you to the grave. You're there by yourself. Remember to prepare for this day now. You can only do something now. Don't say tomorrow, tomorrow because tomorrow may never come. That's when that's that's the fourth lesson we learned from the other from from this here. The fifth lesson: choose your peers, your mentors, very very carefully. Peers and mentors are just fancy words for friends and people that you take advice from, basically. So choose your peers and your mentors very very wisely, you know, and you'll see why. Always have friends who are smarter than you, like the brilliant fish. If you're the smart fish, have the brilliant fish as your model. Don't follow the stupid fish. Because the brilliant people help expand your horizon. They help you grow. You need to grow. If you're not growing, 
if you're not growing, that means you're dying. So you need people that will push you, propel you where you want to go and not pull you back where you shouldn't be. You know, you want people to push you forward and your, your journey. So choose your friends and your peers very wisely. And the people that counsel you very wisely. And learn from their mistakes and their wisdom. You don't have to make mistakes. Learn from other people's mistakes. Always remember that success leaves clues. Success leaves clues. And I'm going to give you some story to, to cement this idea. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story of John the Baker. Cake, John the Baker. So John the Baker uh, has been baking professionally for 40 years. And his specialty is dessert. And even within the dessert category, his specialty really, what he's known for, what he's coined for, is the ultimate German chocolate cake. He's been practicing this for 40 years. They make him only do that. That's his signature cake, German chocolate cake. John the Baker had went to school and studied and whatever, he's in France. He is top in his field. There's nobody in the world, you know, that can make a better chocolate cake than him. So John the Baker, right? So let's say you were served a slice of that heavenly rich chocolate cake one time on some occasion, and you went berserk, you went bananas. You said, you know what? I'm going to impress my mother-in-law. <laughs> And I'm going to finally show her who's, who's the cook here, and who's the chef in this house. So I'm going to impress my mother-in-law. I'm going to make her cake just like John. So you tasted it. You say, okay, maybe it has one pound of uh, or flour, maybe, uh, you know, let's say, half a pound of flour, six eggs, 10 sticks of butter, uh, half a liter of heavy cream, and one-fourth one uh, of a cup of sugar, or one-fourth one of a pound of sugar. And off you go to impress your mother-in-law, right? You go to the kitchen. You're like, I'm going to impress that witch. I'm going to show her who's the chef here. So you go to start, start making your chocolate cake. Now you're a part-time uh, weekend cook. You're not really a profession like John. So you kind of try to, to, see, uh, to, to guess what the ingredients are and how he prepared it. And you try to, to do that. So you set the oven at 450 degrees for one hour and you present your cake, that cake to your family on Laylatul Qadr because that's an extra special night and you have such an extra special cake, you know? So you wait to Laylatul Qadr, they're fasting and you say, okay, I'm gonna impress my mother-in-law, you make her the cake as best as you can because you remember how it tasted delicious and everybody went crazy for it, right? So they all enjoy, they, so your family enjoyed that John look-alike cake, but if you want the truth, it was not as good as John's cake, you know? So they tasted it and say, okay, it's okay, but not really. You've been telling us about it for, for, for months. It's not that great. It's okay, it's brown, it's chocolate, but it's not really that great. In fact, it's not, it's not even close to John's. What do you think you could have done differently to make sure that your part-time, the, the part-time cook that you are, you, you create a cake that tastes more like the 40-year-old professional uh, signature cake uh, what would you done what would you have done differently so to make your cake since you're part-time cook to make it taste like the one that took 40 years to make and you guess I'll, I'll, I'll I know you're not you're unmuted so what you love. could do what is it what is it you put, put love in it right you put love in it yeah okay. you can put right. love in it so, yeah yeah maybe one could but I'll tell you the smart thing to do the smart thing to do if you want to get a cake that's just as close as the John, ask him his recipe. Ask him to give you the recipe. Success leaves clues, right? This didn't happen by chance. He spent 40 years of his life working late day and night hard to, to perfect this cake. So ask him for the recipe. He's going to tell you, John is going to tell you, okay, he used eight, eight eggs, not six. He used eight, six of butter, not 10. He used, uh, maybe he cooked it for 45 minutes, not one hour for 375 degrees, not for 450. And he told you exactly. So if you follow, he took 40 years to perfect this cake. Step one, step two. If you take the recipe, you follow step one, step two, you are much more likely to get a cake that's closer or just as good as John's. You can put all the love you want. If you, if you put the wrong ingredients, it's gonna be horrible. It's gonna look brown, it's gonna be chocolate, but it's not gonna taste anything like it. So love doesn't do it. That's what they say, you know put love in it, but that's just not really true. You can put all the love you want, but if you put two extra eggs and cook it for 450 degrees, you're gonna burn the cake and burn the love with it, you know? So you get the recipe, the same thing, by the way, with a phone number. My phone number is 973-650-4688. If you don't call it in that sequence, you may get Adham, or you may get Madiha, or you may get somebody else. You have to follow the sequence because success leaves clues. If you're gonna work out, are you gonna to go to Blan and show him, Blan, my workout buddy at the gym. Are you going to go to Bland and show him how to do six abs? 
Have you seen his, his one app? <laughs> you want to go, if you want to really get good results, you want to go to the best, you want to go to, let's say, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger has figured out the formula, how to do this. You're not going to come to Glenn or come to me to say, okay, how do you build biceps? You know, how to build guns? We're not, we're not really, uh, the, you want to pick the best of the best, get their recipe, get their formula and follow it, model it. Success leaves clues. If you model success, you are more likely to arrive at a successful place than to just say, okay, you know what, let me, let me follow this mediocre cook, part-time cook. Let me ask this guy, how do you make cake? If I ask Blan, how do I make cake? I keep picking on Blan because he's my buddy. Or ask Adam, how do I make cake? If he hasn't tells me, we're in trouble, man. My, my mother-in-law may kick me out of the house. So you want to actually go to somebody who has done it full-time, persistently, and he gets consistently those results. You want to get, if somebody gets a res, you know, good result every now and then, it could be just luck. It's not really, because you know, sometimes you do things like, oh my God, that's impressive, but it, it doesn't repeat. So you want to go to someone not that gets good results every once in a while or sometimes. You want to go to someone who gets consistent results. That means this guy, this person, whatever, he or she, figured out the success formula. So take that formula, model it, follow it. You will get those results. Very important lesson, success leave clues. There's clues behind it. People don't get there by chance. Elon Musk didn't become Elon Musk because he just woke up one day and he had uh, you know, a vision or something like that. These people work day and night. They thought they modeled people. You know? So you want to model success. That's a very important lesson for people in the, in the, anywhere, you know, with the family, with work, with everything. You want to model people that made it day and night over and over and get the same results over and over. Those are the people you want to follow, get advice from. Those are your peers. Those are your, as I said, those are your, the people that you want to counsel with. Not, not somebody who's mediocre, who gets success every once in a while. So that's the other lesson that you can learn from this one here. Follow, follow in the footsteps of these people who have succeeded consistently and do what these successful people do because they figured out the formula of success. <clears throat> we spoke about that. Okay, either, either becomes friends with those people, you become friends with them, or you can read their books. You know, you, don't, you may not, uh, you know, learn from, uh, let's say some bodybuilder, like, uh, what's his name, Arnold Schwarzenegger directly, but you know, he's got books out there, read these books that he put out there and follow them. So that's, that's also a recipe. So choose what you want to spend your, choose who you want to spend your time with and who you want to model after very wisely. Apply the same formula that made them succeed. You will make you succeed too. <clears throat> the last, this is the last advice, which I believe is the most important advice, okay? I would like to remind all of us to live by this one. And it's my, in my opinion, again, it's the, it's the most important thing that so I want to share it with you, okay? Love your family, choose your friends. Love your family, choose your friends. Remember Allah gave you your family. It's the only family you will have. No matter how dysfunctional your family might be, you better love them. You know why? <laughs> this actually may come as a surprise to you. There is no functional family. Some people blame everything on their family. There is no family that's functional. All, every single family is dysfunctional. And I'm gonna prove to you how. I have not come across a family that's functional yet, honestly, in all these years. If it's not your Modi spouse, it's your disobedient child. If, it's, if you are proud of your daughter, you are disappointed with your son. If it's not your weird sister, it's your crazy brother. If it's not your creepy uncle, it's your ugly aunt. There's always something. There's always something wrong. There's no family that's functional. Every single family is dysfunctional. So do not blame the way you're showing up. Do not blame what you become on your family. That is not fair because there's not perfect family. There's nothing perfect in this world as we know, you know? Trust me, we all have them. We all have those crazy people, crazy relative family members. We all have those struggles. We all have those challenges. We all have those memories that we wish we didn't have. Everybody, that's, that's the, the human factor. We all have that. We all have that in common. We all share that. We're, we belong to the human race. We have the same human problems, you know? All families are dysfunctional. We said that. So now that you feel lucky, because your family is not that bad, it's somewhat normal, I have serious requests of you. I'm going to ask you something serious. I'm going to request something. So you feel, okay, my family is really not that bad. They're not that weird. My uncle's not creepy. My, you know, my aunt is not ugly. Okay, fine. You're happy now about your family. You have somewhat better than average family. That's great. 
So for God's sake, stop blaming your family for the way you turned out. Since your family is not that bad, stop blaming your family for how you turned out. The average person here in this group is 50 years old or maybe older. 50 years old, I think the average person in this group. What does your family have to do with you and how you turned out? Abdurrahman, I think your uh, your, your connection. I'm I'm sure I'm you can. Sorry about that. Now it's working. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, so your family has nothing to do with you, how you turned out now. <laughs> with how you turned out now. So do not blame it on your family. You blaming your family for something they did or did not do 40, 50, 60 years ago, maybe. Come on, man, stop playing the victim card because that your family probably, your, most of us, our parents died 10, 15, 20 years ago. So why are we blaming something on them from 50 years ago when we had 50 years to undo that damage or to, to, to fix the problem? So we cannot, people that play victim, they play victim, they remove themselves from the responsibility. They say, you know, it's somebody's fault. Remember every time you point your finger, someone, you have three fingers pointing back at you. Every time you point your finger, you have three fingers pointing back at you. So do not blame your misfortune on your family from 50 years ago. One time, and I one time, my father looked at me. I was somewhere, uh, they had fruits or something, banana. You know, Bisham banana can store my tasweet bizani, Makati banana, banana Somalia. He gave me a look. I remember he gave me a look. No, don't you dare. But look, you know, we all get that. So now every time my dad, when he was alive, every time he looks at me, boom, it brings me back to that moment. I'm like, what does he want? What is he, what is he disapproving of? He's like, tell me, what is he then after a while, you know, you, you may run into someone who, ah, well, you know, somebody cross-eyed. He looks at you, the same look, the same thing, brings back the thing, thinking, oh, this guy is really doesn't like me. Or he said, and it's not true. That is, you made association with that look meaning this way. You, nothing has a meaning except the meaning you give it. If you give it a meaning, okay, that look means don't do that, or that look means to prove it is not true in reality. In actual, you know, it may be true in uh, reality, but not actuality. It's not really real. You made this link. That doesn't mean every time somebody looks at that same look, he means this. It's all illusion. You made that conclusion yourself. So nothing has a meaning except the meaning that you give it. So you gave that look a meaning, it means this. It's not true. That person is different. You know, you meet somebody else other than your father who looks the same way. And then you're, right away, it gives you that surge of feelings. You get all these feelings of anger. Like, oh my God, what is he disapproving of me? It could be just innocent look. It could be cross-eyed. You know, so, so do not be sure that something, when somebody says something, it means this, because it's the menu that you decided. This, when somebody says this, it means this. When somebody says that, it means that. You decided these things. These are your conclusions. It's not really truth. You know, so sometimes be careful. So people always associate things, feelings with certain looks or certain actions, and it's not always true. So that's that. So, so stop blaming your family. Stop playing the victim card. And to make matters worse, Circassians also on top of that, not only their family, their culture also. <laughs> they put their culture on top of everything else. Oh, it's because it's occasion, because Adiyakhabza, because it's this, 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 because, you know, they make it even more complicated. They say, you know what? I am so-and-so because so-and-so. That is not true. That was 50 years ago. No, that's not true. Don't, 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 don't bail out because of your shortcomings. It's your personal responsibility to be, to be up to date. This is, this is, this is not 1950. This is 2022. So you have to be up to date with, with your, with your, with your, with your ammunition, with your character, with your actions, with your thinking, with your looks, with everything. You cannot live like, you know, 50 years ago, you know? So enough said, I think. So they throw the Circassian culture in there too. Why not? Might as well just add more, make it, make it really their fault. It really is not my fault. Add more problems. You know, it's really not my fault. So we have my father is like this, my mother's like this. They told us not to eat with us. They told us not to, when you do something, stop, when you, and then circassians on top, oh my God, it really, really, I really have nothing to do with how I am. It's all they're doing. That's, that's stupid. That is not, that doesn't, doesn't really jive with me. So why not go for the double one? add circassians and add Muslim and add, you know, go, 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 go. And the bottom line is, what is it, what does it matter anyway? Even if it's their fault, what does that do for you now? Even if it's circassian, even if Muslims, even if Adiga, even if my friends were this, you know, somebody abused me, somebody beat me up. So let's say it's all true. The bottom line is, what has it done to you now? What effect does it have for you now? It is really up to you to, to, to present anything you want. You know, you can be whatever you want. It's your shortcoming, not theirs. Do not blame it on them. When you point at them, you have three fingers pointing at you. So look at yourself, look in the mirror first. Do not blame your problems just because you don't wanna 
uh, update your, 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 your software, do not blame it on them. Just because you don't want to update your skills, do not blame it on somebody else. It's you who is the problem, not your father 50 years ago who died 20 years ago. What does he have to do with the problem now? He hasn't lived to see this day. He, lived 50, he died 40 years ago. This is 2022. He, your father doesn't know the challenges that are happening now. So don't blame it on him. He has nothing to do with it. He did the best he can, but, but you're the one who decided, you know, when he does this, it means this. You came up with a conclusion. This means this, this means this, this means that. And you bonded yourself. You box yourself. It's your problem. It's not your father's problem or your culture or Islam or Circassian. It's nothing. So <clears throat> even if it doesn't work, even if it is, you know, 50 years ago, it's going to have an effect on you now. It's just your problem, honestly. People that play the victim role do not take any responsibility for how they show up in life. People that play the victim role do not take personal responsibility for, for how they're showing up in life. They do not take responsibility for their actions. They do not take responsibility for the words they use. And maybe they hurt people with their words. They don't take responsibility for that. They say, okay, that's me. So if you hurt someone, it, does, it doesn't matter what your background is. You did the action. So you, you cannot blame it on your parents when you go talk to blame it on your family. It has nothing to do with your family. You're the one who uttered the words, not your dad, not your mom, because they're dead. God, so do not blame things, your dysfunction on your family's dysfunction because every family is dysfunctional. <laughs> There's no functional families, believe me. And, and I'm sure you, you, you understand that. I'm sure you know that. So anyway, victimhood shackles you, boxes you, paralyzes you. You have paralysis, analysis paralysis, they call it. So you paralyze, you can't do anything because you say, oh, it's his fault, it's fault. You keep closing, closing, closing the door and then you become nothing. You're nothing. It's like putting the handcuffs on yourself and then throwing yourself in jail. And then throwing the key even. You know, it's not a It's a tip of tahin, not a You know, not only you prison yourself, but you also threw the key because you don't want to take any action. You don't want to take personal responsibility. So you actually toss the key away too. I'm going to be like this till I die. Well, that is not acceptable. Not if you're going to be a powerful leader in this community. Not if you're going to make any significant change to the culture that we have, to Muslim culture, you can, that doesn't doesn't jive. Even if even if even if everything is true, everything you said is true, and you're you're a mess. Well, nobody needs you really. This 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 society doesn't need you. You because you don't belong in this age day and age. You belonged fifty years ago. If your if your information didn't get updated now, because your father fifty years ago says you don't belong. You, know, you belong fifty years ago. You're useless. You are not really. A, a, a productive member of the society anymore. You cannot blame it on the past because the past is gone. It's all full of regrets and guilt. The future hasn't come. Only now, only now you can change. So stop blaming things on other people. Look at yourself first. That's, that to me is the most important thing. Personal responsibility because everybody walks alone at the end of the day and everybody is responsible for his own action, his own action. If you can, for example, and I talk too much, right? I talk, I'm very verbose, I'm very, you know, uh, dynamic, very energetic. Yeah, I have a lot of energy. I'm freak. That's how I was born. I've been trying to talk less. I couldn't. But you know what? I started changing the vocabulary. I started changing the words. You can always do something. I cannot talk less because it's me. I'll be, I'll be somebody else. I cannot be. Okay, I'm not, not feeling. It's me. But since I cannot change that, I change the words I use. I don't curse anymore. My friend before the company I kept, because all oh, lawyers and doctors, they're sharks. They're all sharks in my field. They're all sharks. Then that's the language. They curse. Every other word is a curse word, like chuckers. I love chuckers. All of them. So that was my norm, because I had to swim with them, basically. So I always had to use the language. And I, you know, when I came to, to work, you know, people, when I came to a circulation community, you know, people say, what is this guy? He's obnoxious. He's this, he's that. Because I was aggressive. It's, it's my, my job demanded that I become aggressive, so I became aggressive, you know? But now I, I started changing maybe the tone when I talk to my, now I'm just trying to get through the material, so I'm speaking fast and I'm shouting. But when I talk to my family, they notice, I don't wanna talk much, about, but they notice that I became much calmer. I don't curse anymore, I used to curse. I don't curse, I don't get angry very quickly at them. I'm very patient, I'm very playful with my kids all the time. They always make them laugh. I'm, I'm the goofball here, so. So, you know, they noticed changes. My wife, my wife doesn't tell me, she's the last one to tell me that she noticed I'm calmer. I don't get agitated. You know, if she wants something, sure. You know, today, I mean, I was supposed to prepare for this lecture. I went to Trader Joe's. I went to stop and shop. I went to get her some things. And then 
we, we did a lot of things. So I'm like, man, I really need to prepare. So, but I'm always putting myself out there. I always did with my family, with everybody who knows me, my friends, but, but I became more so now after I started praying. I became calmer. I don't, you know, I'm always happy. I mean, my friends know me, I'm, you know, I don't sleep much, but I'm always, I wake up in the morning. I keep the same energy all the way until one o'clock at night. And I drive you all crazy with my texts and my messages and all that, but uh, you don't have to read them. If, and if you don't like it, tell me. It'll, make, it'll save me the time, honestly. But I always like to add, maybe, maybe sometimes now you hear something, you may not like it now, but maybe two months from now, that may make sense for you. So I always send things as long as they're beneficial, as long as they're positive. I don't send any garbage and things like that in politics. I don't like politics, but you always add value. You don't know when it's gonna grab. You always set the sail like this fish, set the sail and you don't know when they're gonna bite. So always when you want good information, always share because okay, anyway, victimhood shackles you and paralyzes you, we said. It's like putting the handcuffs yourself on yourself, throwing yourself in jail and then tossing the key away. So if you're that person, wake up and smell the falafel because it does not matter how bad your family have been. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It's your responsibility before God to show up with your best self. Forget about people. Forget about your parents who died, or my parents, my father who died. Forget it. It's your responsibility. God created you one out of 300 million other possibility. Allah created you. You're responsible at least before him to show up with your best self, to update your data, update your software. You have to clean up. You have to do your own homework. Yani, so you have to actually commit to action. Knowledge, the ilm, the it doesn't impress anybody. Flan, flan, doctor, flan, flan. If you're not doing anything really constructive with the information, information, your licenses, your degrees do not mean anything. If you don't really do something to move the ball forward, you have to move the ball forward. If you're not, then who, what, what good is your information? Shant, to, to say, you know, I'm not really good. People like information sometimes. People that have information and don't act, I think people that just like to show off, I am so-and-so. That doesn't, I never liked that. I never said, you know, I'm not doing doctor. Like I said, I, I don't like that. And honestly, I never did. Because it's really, your words don't matter. Your actions speak much louder than your words. Your words, whatever your license, your degree, your information, shibihawi. What are you doing with it? Are you really showing up with these values or are you just kind of hiding away and you're doing nothing, not taking responsibility? You have to show up every day. I don't care if you're atheist. I don't care if you're uh, Jewish. I don't, care if you, I don't care if you believe in monkeys. But how are you showing up? How are you treating your neighbors? How are you treating your family? How are you treating Muslims? How you, what, the way you show up is the most important thing. What you know is from you. And Allah, they has back Ali if you don't show up at your best self. So I think I drove the point home. That's enough. Okay. So you still have the responsibility before God to show up with your best self. You still have the responsibility to uplift the orphans and help the needy and count your blessings. You have responsibility toward the yateen. You have responsibility I swear to God, I swear to God. Today, I was so connected with gratitude. I swear to God, I never felt before. Who cares what happened in Syria or in Jordan or in Qafqas 50 years ago? Who cares? That's a different country. That time has passed. We are here in America 2022. How are you showing up now? Forget about before. We are, number one, we're alive. We look down on the floor, you're above ground. It's a good day. If you look down and you see you're above ground, it's a good day, enough. You are on the right side of the grass. So that alone is enough to say thank you. And people don't like that. People don't want to hear that. Please keep your promise to yourself because we all have our enough problems. If you coming to add more value to me, if you're going to 
not pull me down, I'll be patient a little bit because I'm patient. I like to turn people around if I can. But after a while, I'm like, you know, man, get the hell out of here. Every time I see this guy, I feel depressed. I don't want to see this guy or this girl or anybody. So Allah said, فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ وَأَمَّا بِنَعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّسْ ثلاثة قسم واو حرف قسم واو قسم ولم يقل بكم قديش أنت مظلوم وبمن ظلمك وبما وهذا الظلم تمام بيحكي لك هيك لأن الماضي قد مدى منذ 40 أو 50 أو 60 سنة عم بكتب العربي الفصيحة يا عربية الفصيحة أدرس بس بل أنت ما زلت تعيش في الماضي خوفا أن تتحمل مسؤولية نفسك في الحاضر وما حدث من أكثر من 50 سنة لا علاقة له في يومنا هذا ولا في القرارات التي تتخذها الآن ولا في طريق معاملتك للآخرين كل منا مسؤول عن نفسه أمام الله وكل عن كل قراراته وعن كل سلوكه وعن سعادته الشخصية ويجب علينا أن لا نتهرب بلوم ابائنا الذين قد توفوا من في قبورهم من 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 يعني من 20 30 سنه لنفرض فعلا الحق كله على ابائنا وعلى التربيه اللي لم تكن على ما يرام ما عجب تربيتهم هل هذا يعني ابو حميد عبد الرحمن يمكن يمكن من عندك اي سي اي هير ذا ذا مايكروفون ليس على ما يرام هل هذا يعطي اي حق انه ترد على الابتسامه بالعبسه ولا ترد على ولا بالزورة ولا ترد على عمل خير باذى ولا ترد على الصدق بكذب ولا ترد على الصراحه بالخيانه هل هذا يعطيك الحق ان كان حق عليهم انه انا هيك انا هيك انا واحد ابتسم تعبس فيها هذا الحق ولا واحد كان امنك شغله تخونه ولا واحد جاملك تروح انت تاذيه هذا مو حق يعني واذا انت هيك شو بيهو يعني سو يو كان يو ار نوت جونا سينك وذ ذا بيرسون ذا بيرسون از نوت جونا بي وذ يو سو كنا بليمت انا هيك طبيعي اخي ما انا هيك عصبي انا ايش بيهو يا عصبي حل عنا يعني يا يا ليرن ليرن تو بي نوت عصبي او حل عنا ما في يعني ذاتس من ام سينت ان اغلي واي بت ام سينت تو اول اس ما عم بحكي لحدا معين انا لا بفكر عم عم اشر على حدا يعني ما بيصير واحد يقول انا هيك والله طبيعي انا هيك ما بيصير انا هيك حبيبي ناو ذيس ذيس امريكا ذيس نوت سيريا ذيس نوت لبنان ذيس نوت قفقاز ذيس نوت جوردن ذيس امريكا العالم ما عندهم تسامح مثل ما بيجوا يقولوا يلا ماشي الحاله كلهم في بعض هون لانه مجمعت الشعوب هون يعني خلق يعني your value system doesn't jive with the Puerto Rican value system with the Italian value system with the Irish كل واحد بيجي الناس من كل so you have your you have to be fine you have to have etiquette you have to have class you cannot just say that's me that's me we're not we cannot bring Syria to here we cannot bring Jordan to here this is America you have to be up upgraded updated ما اظن علي انسان عاقل ان يقبل انه هالشيء هذا انه واحد اذا ابتسم عليك تعبس فيه انت او اذا رد عمل لك عمل خير تاذيه او اذا حكى لك شغله بصير تكذبه او صار حكى وكان مأمن معك بدخلته ما اظن اني انسان بعاقل يقبل هذا فلماذا تقبله انت وانت مسلم صالح ومثقف وجامعي فوق كمان ليش تقبله انت اذا اذا مو معقول الانسان العاقل مو معقول واحد يعمل لك يبتسم لك تدحو كف يعني واي ار يو سيد اتس اوكي انت مثقف وانت مسلم وانت ريبريزنتيف اوف اسلام وانت جامعي وانت شركسي وانت سوري اللي هو يعني ليش تسمح لحالك ما دام العاقل الانسان العاقل المتوسط اللي ما عنده زكاه يقول هذا مو معقول انه واحد يعطيك هيك ادفع بالتي هي احسن يعني وشو هذا الم يقل جل جلاله في كتابه الكريم في سوره فصلت ولا تستوي الحسنه ولا السيئه ادفع بالتي هي احسن فاذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوه كانه ولي حميم الله حكاها في سوره فصلت فصلت وقال الله تعالى ايضا للرسول الكريم في سوره الانبياء وما ارسلناك الا رحمه للعالمين وهذا نحن اخذنا شعارنا هذا شعارنا نحن اللي نتمثل فيه ونحاول تو ايميوليت ذا كاركترستكس اوف ذا بروفيت سو وي كود درو كلوزر تو الله وي اول سيد ذات وي اول اجريد اون ذات اي نو اي ريس يو بت ات وزنت ماي ديسيجن وي اول سيد اوكي ذس وات ذس اورجانيزيشن ستاندز فور وي وونت بي اكشن اورينتد وي وونت دو ثينجز لان العالم كثير ذي بوينت فينجرز بوس ذا تيرس ما تيرس We want to show the new page of Islam that people are working. People can see us working. We are Muslims with proud, proud Muslims. We have T-shirts that says, and we're working. They're going to say these crazy Muslims are working this weather. But after that, the people who are not going to come and we're not going to the same doors. And it's hard. And then I got sick. Madiha moved. Madiha was the right arm. And I don't have anyone who gives me the right arm. Everyone gives me the right arm. But we need. You can't. 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 And it doesn't have to be that big. Maybe now we're thinking something. Uh, the ladies' committee they did garage sale, and that's that's easily doable by them. We should the guys. We should find something that's easily doable. It doesn't have to be big like the masari, ma masari, but we have to show consistent actions like John the Baker, consistent, consistent to get results. Otherwise, you're not going to get results. You're not going to tip the scale if you don't show up 
day after day after day doing good things. You can do one time, oh, we don't have like one guy, he did nice thing, that's it. But when people, when people see you over and over again, they're gonna say, Muslims, good action. They're gonna draw the correlation, they're gonna make the association, but we have to show consistency when we haven't, you know, we failed. So I'm asking you, all of you to ask yourself, have you noticed a change in you? Have you noticed a change? Did your family tell you you changed? Did your coworker tell you you changed? Did you, do you smile more? Do you laugh more? Are you happier? Are you less angry? Are you more patient? Yeah, I mean, something has changed, I'm sure. So go back and, and re-examine yourself and your relationships with your family and workers and see if anything changed over this year and a half. Otherwise, we are just wasting time, honestly. You know, knowledge by itself is useless. We'll continue, I guess, Yanni, but uh, you know, as we're researching things, we will learn something will stick, but that's like playing it low, really. We want to play at a higher level. You want to commit to action. You will not learn. If you don't do something, people say, listen, people say, I know I should lose weight. And then they, uh, well, if you know you should lose weight and you're not losing weight, that means you don't know. Some people sometimes they say, you know what? They make excuses. My, I'm big bones. Or like, you know, just have big shoulders. Be real. Your butt is bigger than Chicago. And it needs its own zip code. You have to look at things the way they are. You can't say you're big bone when you were, you know, like 300 pounds. Come on. You have to be serious. If somebody doesn't tell you the truth, he's not your friend. He's deluding you. Look at things as they are. Don't look at them worse than they are or better than they are. But look at things the way they are. And otherwise, you're not moved to take action. If you think, okay, you're making excuses. Oh, I'm big boned. Well, you're not going to lose weight. I have belly sticking out like this. Okay, I'm going to work out in the gym once a week. I'll lose, I'll lose weight. I'll, I will, I will, I should, I should, I should, I should. You're shooting all over yourself. That's what I call that. I should. If you think, if you know you should and you're not doing it, you are shooting all over yourself and you are lying to yourself. So you should, should be made into a must. If it's a must, you know what decision means in, Ita in, in Latin? Decision, the word decision comes from incision. When the surgeon make, makes, this, makes an incision, he's cutting, cutting the skin. Decision is from the Latin root word of incision. That means you're cutting off any other possibility. When you make a real decision, it's it's done deal. You cannot you would not allow any other possibility. That's the real decision. Otherwise, it's the you're, you're lying, you're loving yourself. You're loving yourself into accepting who you are, the way you are. You're lowering your standard when you say I should do this, but you don't do it. Then you don't know, you don't know it. Stop saying, stop talking about it. Either do it or just shut up. Honestly, I hate to say that, but don't say I, I should go and I'm going to go and you're not doing anything. That means you don't know it or you don't buy into it or you're lying to yourself or you're just saying to just show that you're responsible, but you really deep down inside, you're not responsible. So I should do, I should stop shooting, man. Do you say you should change the shoot into a must, then you'll take action. Otherwise you will not. People do things for two reasons. And I, again, I'm going off my notes here. There are two, I think, will Islam be Pain and pleasure. People do everything, everything, everything we do, and, and challenge me if you want, anything you do in your day, you do it for one or two reasons. Either to avoid pain or to gain pleasure. People will do more to avoid pain than to gain pleasure, by the way. Now, pain, when, let's, let's talk about this. Let's say you want to lose weight. Or let's say you want to really forget losing weight. Let's say you want to get in touch with your own, we're going to make this relevant. Make, get in touch with your own childlike curiosity, your own person that you were created initially for. You created as a child with, with big vision. You want to get in touch with that child. You want to wake up before Fajr. So Fajr here in New Jersey is 6.01. That means you want to wake up like 4.35 o'clock to do a couple of uh, in the morning, read the Quran. But that takes, takes, takes time, takes energy. Not everybody can do that. But if you make it into a must, I should wake up. No, no, you're not, you're not waking up. If you make it into must, that means you will wake up. You will make up. So now that that's pain. Pain is like doing things that, you know, you're sleeping, you're comfortable, you're bed. Now it's cold, whatever. That's painful. You know, that's painful for people. So people, you know, will, will, will just go over the pain. Pain is like a push, you know, like, oh, let me do it. Like a push, you know, pushing. But when you do it and you start realizing the benefits, it becomes a pull. It becomes a pull. You know, it's, it's pleasure because you get pleasure now. You're waking up. You're improving, you're happier, you know you're doing you, you start feeling good about yourself. So now pleasure is a pull. Now it becomes effortless. So pain, people do more to avoid pain, you know. They don't want to you're losing weight. You want to go to the gym, you want to pay for the gym, you want to drive to the gym, you want to find someone to work out with. It's a pain. 
But once you do it, you kind of go through it, persist, persist, go through the pain. Then you start losing weight. Your arms are good. People start telling you, oh, you look nice. You look healthy. You lost weight, whatever the case is. Then it becomes a pleasure. It becomes a pull. It's no longer, it's no longer an effort. So pleasure pulls you while pain pushes you. But pain has to push you first to commit to action. Then pleasure will pull you. I, I, I hope I made the point. But everything we do in life has to do with pleasure and pain or tarheeb and tarheeb. In Islam, it says, Allah kama bihki lab, Allah ta'ala bihki lab, Al-Quran, jannat, na'im, nahar, hey kama, pleasure. Wallah, wal nahar bi'illa knar, wa fiya zakum, wa fiya kaza, pain. So Allah uses pain and pleasure in the Quran. Every page has pain and pleasure. Mu'mineen wal kafirin, all the time. So it's normal, yani, I'm not saying anything that's normal, but it's real in human psych and behavior psychology. Today, it applies, even today. Okay. Now, one, one more thing I want to repeat. I think the past, I don't know if I touched it, but I said so many things, I forgot. The past is not equal to the future unless you live there. I'll repeat that. The past is not equal to the future unless you live in the past. It's 2022. It's not 1960. So, like I said, wake up and smell of laughing. Leave the past in the past. Live today and plan tomorrow. You can design your future if you let the bygones be bygones. If you let the bygones be bygones, the things that happen, you can, you can actually design your destiny. Of course, with Allah's permission, Allah has to bless it, but Allah created us so we can actually do something. Allah didn't create us so we can sit here passively and get wait and, 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 and say we should, we should, we should. Allah created us so we can do something. So Allah will bless you. Will you so you, if you actually commit to action, you, you decide now, the only time you have power of is this minute. You know, you know, minutes ago, what we talked about is gone. It's history, it's not behind us. Uh, ahead of us, it hasn't come yet. So the only time you have any control over anything is this present moment. So if you make a real decision now, not should, to must show up, to must wake up in the morning, must lose weight, must do whatever it is. Don't make it a should, make it a must. And you really follow it with momentum. Moment, see, when, when you start losing weight, you build momentum. Momentum is key. If you're, you know, do things, just the Habib who Hamid you just did it. So it's real for you, it just register. Follow momentum, momentum builds on itself and it becomes a reality. But with that action, your knowledge is useless. Your degrees are useless if you don't commit to action. So tatbiq, l'amal. I said, lam wal mim al-ain. Alam, lama, amal. Amal is most important. La lama min dun amal. Wala nafa'a bil alam. Subhanallah. So you can design your future if you let the bygones be bygones. The root word for decision is incision, as we said in Latin. So when the surgeon makes a cut, makes a decision, that means he cut off, he cut the flesh. So that means there's no going back. Decision is when you decide, when you make a real decision, there is no going back. Hell or high water, you're going to do it. So that's why they call it decision. They don't call it should decide. You know, they say decide. Either <laughs> do it or get off the pot, like they say, you know. So... <clears throat> A real decision means you sever whatever you know you must sever with and you cut off all possibilities and you went for what you want. That's a real decision. Other than that, it's not a real decision. You must sever with your past if you want to move forward with your life. In other words, stop lying to yourself. Stop telling yourself you are a victim of this and that and that. Raise your own standard. Your parents may have been dead long time ago. So stop blaming your parents for how you are today. Know you are created for a higher purpose. The fact that you're here tonight and the fact that you're still listening to me, yeah, for like an hour, maybe an hour, I don't know what time it is. I don't have the clock here in front of me. Tells me that you are a serious person about your life and that you are among the very few that do versus the many that talk. Break the shackles of the past if you want to be free and move toward the future. So I'm going to uh, share with you something that I, uh, well, let me just... Let me just say this. Okay, so step, step up to your potential. Everybody, we are not playing to our full potential. Nobody is, you know, because we get lazy, we get tired, we get old, we get hurt. So try to play as much up as you can to your full potential, you know. God doesn't create garbage. We do. You know, God created you for a reason. He doesn't create garbage, but we do create garbage. We have the luggage and we drag it with us too. And wherever we go, we dump it on other people too. We don't just have it. No, no, no. We got to dump it on everybody, so... Uh, give up the lie that you have been telling yourself that you're a victim if you want to become a victor. You should be a victor, not a victim. 
I share with you incantation. Incantation is something that you say to yourself, and you really should, should record this and have it written down somewhere. Something that you say to yourself over and over again with intensity, with sincerity, with power. It becomes real. It becomes embedded in your subconsciousness. That's incantation, meaning incant, meaning you, you put it into your subconsciousness. That's what incantation means. So I shared with you this incantation before, but maybe you did seem weird at the time. Now with the background that I gave you, I want you to listen to it again or record it and act upon it. Wallahi al-Azim. I don't want to say it. One time I said years ago, years ago, Tony Robbins, I went to Tony Robbins seminar. I said, Ma bdihki al pas. Yani, uh, well, you know what? I better not talk. It's okay. I, I, I don't want to say exactly specific. I said, I'm going to have this and this and this. Things that I never thought I would have. Things. I'll, I'll say it since everybody knows me. Anyway, I said, I was a student. I was a student in college. I said, I want to have 10 houses by the year so and so. Wallahi al I went to the seminar and I wrote down, I want to have, uh, if you're dreaming, might as well dream big. You know what? You want boat? No, have two boats. You want to plan? Have a three bed. He said, go crazy. Dream what you want. Dream. Put it on your dream board. I never did that. I never found that. I just wrote it down. I want to have 10 houses. Wallahi al-Azim. And I put, and I put down the, 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 the binder they gave me. I never looked at it. I went to school, graduated school. Six, seven years later, I'm going through my school stuff notes. I'm going to, so I saw this binder. No, no, let me look. But I, you know, I'm laughing at myself. 12 years ago, 10 years ago, I went to the center. Let me see what I put down. Wallahi al-Azim. This was like 10 years, maybe seven years after graduate chiropractic school, eight years, something like that. And I looked at 10 houses. Wallahi al-Azim. I had 10 houses. Not nine, not 11. I had 10, two family, multi-family houses here, Jersey City. Uh, Bellevue, uh, Patterson, uh, all the way down south. I had 10 houses. Wallahi al I did, not nine, not 11, and I never looked at it again. So do not think this thing is not real. Whatever you focus on, you will go. You know, if you don't have a target, everything is a target, right? You have to be laser focused. If you want something, be laser focused on it. And believe me, you'll surprise yourself. But if you have to follow with action, you can't just dream. Because dreaming is, is not really. Planning is the thing. Plan, plan requires momentum, requires action, requires consciousness, conscious awareness and conscious action. You can't just plan, wish I had an airplane, wish I had a house. No, no, you want to have it and work back. Five years from now, I want to have a house. Work backwards and start making the actions that you must make. Are you going toward the plan or are you going away? Then we adjust. So if you, if you break it down, and measure, you have to measure every once in a while. Are you going closer to your goal or are you going away from your goal? So, so you have to plan. This is the incantation that I mentioned to you one time before. Let's see if it makes any more sense. And I honestly advise you to write it down somewhere and just try it. Don't believe me, but try it for yourself. Okay, I'm gonna leave you with this incantation. I promise you this is the last thing I'll talk about. I recommend that all of you commit to it and live by it if you want to make a change. If not, that's okay. Here's the incantation. So please pay very close attention. You, you want to say that again with intensity, with, with, with determination, with physical intensity. You want to be, you want to be sure. You can't say, okay, no, 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 no. Doesn't, you want to be intense. If you're not intense, it doesn't go in. Physiology is the most important thing to learn. Like I said, learning is first you get it in your head, right? You, that's, that's mental learning. You really don't know it, but you know the idea. Somebody say, oh, you know what? Some, I heard them say something, but it's here. And, you, and then after a while, you forget it because you can only feel so. Then after this, the second phase of learning, it touches your heart. It moves your heart. You think, oh, my God, that's personal. Now, we made it a little bit more personal because it moved you. It touched your feelings, right? But still, it's in the middle. You know when it becomes real? When, it, when you embody it, when you work with it, when you, you know, if you, you know, if you can dream about running, right? Well, running is really good, mental. Then you say, okay, well, I'm running. I can see myself running. Okay, maybe person. Then when you're actually running, physically running, then it's real. So learning does not become real till you embody the teaching. If you don't embody the teaching, you are deluding yourself. Stop putting junk in your head, clear your head, because you have more things to worry about and more things to blame. <laughs> if you don't do it. Anyway, here's the incantation. Okay, now, now I am the voice. Now I am the voice. That's right. Now I am the voice. I will lead, not follow. I will believe, not doubt. I will create, not destroy. I'm a force for good. I am a force for God. Now I am a leader. Defy the odds. Set a new standard. Step up. Step up. Step up. I'll repeat it. Now I am the voice. I will lead, not follow. I will believe, not doubt. I will create, not destroy. I'm a force for good. I'm a force for God. Now I am a leader. Defy the odds. Set a new standard. Step up. 
step up, step up. You want to sit with emotion intensity. You want to really nail it. Otherwise, it doesn't really go. It means like, okay, I'm just saying something. So it's all mental. You want to make it physiology. You want to in include your physiology in this incantation. Otherwise, nothing will realize. You're not going to realize anything. So there's a saying, tell me, tell me who you hang out with. I'll tell you your future. Tell me your friends. sahib sahib. You know that something? If you take five, the five closest friends that you hang out with, everybody has friends. Take their income, divide it by five, their average income, that's how much money you make. Almost on the, on the penny. I, I, I tried that. So take your five best friends, take their income, if they tell you their income, divide it by five, that is how much money you make. Because company likes company. Birds of a feather fly together, right? Flock together, whatever they say. So people like you who are like them, because the conversation is always about money. I have chiropractic friends, and I try to myself, really, almost exactly on a dot, I have my best five friends. So if you if you hang out with people that are down in the bucket, but then the bu bottom of the bucket, you're gonna be down in the bottom of the bucket. So choose your friends carefully. Love your family with any color, any craziness, any weirdness they come because it's the only family. Allah wants you to love them. Allah gave them to you. You're with them. Love your family. Choose your friends. If you have friends that you know you should drop, drop them. The sooner you drop them, the better. Because you know what? When you drop them, you're gonna free up time. You're gonna stop praying more. You're gonna start. You're gonna replace them with better quality friends. So if you have friends that you know you shouldn't hang out with, just cut the time slowly, slowly, or drop them completely because they are pulling you back. People don't want to see you progress because you know what? The gap gets bigger. They feel jealous. They don't mean it, but people like misery. Misery like company. Misery likes company, right? If they're, they want to keep you down, not intentionally, but really your friends dictate the level of success you're going to achieve. And that is true. You can talk to anybody. You can read any self-help book. You can read any business journal. It tells you the same thing. Anyway. So start by making real decisions. Follow your decisions with persistent, massive action. You have to follow it with persistent, massive action, not just act every once in a while. It has to be persistent and it has to be huge action, you know? I'll tell you one, one more example, which uh, is, is really nice. It just came to my mind. You know when they, the, the Olympics, they pick the 10 best runners in the whole world. I probably have shared it with some of you. They pick the 10 best runners in the whole world. These people, each one of those 10 is a magnificent person. Once you, you agree, they're all amazing. They spend 20 years running day and night, day and night to pre pre prepare for the Olympics. 20 years, every single day they run. They have a vision bigger than the world, these people. Every one of those 10 is amazing because that's the best 10 in the whole world, right? So they run. Now they all run. Okay, number three, let's say the third one. The third one, what do they do for the third one? You know, they put them on, the, they give them the platinum, I think, and they may sing his national anthem. And that's it. You never hear. You never hear about him tomorrow. And that's not fair. Those seven people that were eliminated, it's really not fair. The world is the world is not fair. You know, they put massive effort. They get eliminated like this because somebody else was had a little bit more heart, a little bit more oomph in them. So number three is amazing person. Once you agree, he's the third fastest person in the world. What does he get? He gets punished. Really, he gets just national anthem. They give him platinum. What does you know? You, nobody remembers him. Hatta his country is angry at him because he's only third. Like, oh, 20 years of not Number two, what does number two get? Number two wins just a little bit, a little bit more by, the, by this much over number three, right? What does he get? He gets also his national anthem. He gets silver a little bit more expensive than the, the planet, I guess. And he may, he may, he may get commercials that number one doesn't want to do. Cheap commercials, you know, a company that can't afford number one thing. And also, really, they forget about him. This guy, really, in particular, his country is really pissed at him. It's like, you idiot. You could have done number, number two. Yani, he gets punished. He gets, this is really not fair. Now, what does number one do? Number one wins by a nose hair. You know, he's just hair, nose, his, his, his nose hair is a little bit longer than number two. He wins by a nose hair, just by a little fraction, fraction of a second. What does he get? He gets everything. Everything. He's the hero. He goes in the books. They sing his national anthem. All the commercial companies go after for commercials. They, he's, everybody, he's, everybody wears his t-shirt. He gets everything. Everything. So the world is not really fair. You have to really play your game at your highest level. Otherwise, you're not. You're gonna get punished. You cannot, as a Muslim nowadays, we're Allah take responsibility to really be representative of Islam. نحن عم نطلع رسالة محمد وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة العالمين. Are we gonna play like number whatever, number one hundred? Are we going to sit like this and just wish things be, be different from Muslims? Or are we going to step up and really strap our gonads on, strap your things on, and just go? You have to. You have to. Otherwise, we might, we're taking the status quo. Otherwise, we're settling. I am not someone who settles for anything. 
And I know you are not that way either. So you have to say it's time for action. We cannot just learn and put it behind. Oh, we know. Well, they know what the wat the wat the the wat wat the wat wat is going. That's really that is that how you're gonna play? If that's how you're gonna play, that's okay. Because you know what? When I'm reviewing, I'm learning. I'm learning when I review these things. And I'm talking about the shallat said this stuff that I know from before. But when I was I'm preparing tafsir, and I'm bestafia, I'm talam, I don't mind, I'll do it here to myself. So I don't mind, but but are you willing to settle for 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 the crumbs or are you just gonna go for the gold? And it all depends on you taking responsibility for yourself, not blaming it on your culture, on your family, on your friends, on what happened to you, how traumatized you were 50 years ago. Who the hell cares? What are you doing now? I don't care what happened before. I don't care what happened yesterday. What are you doing now? Are you gonna get on a horse or are you just gonna you know, say, okay, that's how it is. You know? So that's, that's my, my call to you. So start by making a real decision and follow your decision with persistent massive action so it becomes a reality. I advise myself and all of you to cultivate the habit of taking action. Uh, okay. We did this. Anything else? So that, that, now I want you to, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the format of the lectures that I'm gonna do anyway. I'm gonna start by, I'm gonna end, I'm gonna talk, talk about the topic. Then I'm gonna ask you at the end to really, I'm gonna summarize like three most important points for me. The reason I ask you to take notes is what is really from this lecture, what are the three most important things that you learn for you? You know, write them down and, and visit them every once in a while. So for me, for me, the main takeaway from, from this one here, two, three, four, five, six points, I can give you 20 points, you know, but I'm just, don't wanna complicate it. The main takeaway points so far, and then I'm gonna do at the end action steps. What are you gonna do with these points? And so for example, for example you're gonna say, okay, we talked this lecture, at the end, how do I summarize this? What do I get out of all these things? Pick the best three things that touched you personally. List them three, four, five, whatever you want. Pick the three for now. And then have three action steps that parallel that, you know. What are you gonna do? Okay, so now you, you have you, these, this is this, how this register is how it touched you. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You're gonna wait for somebody to do something for you, or are you gonna take action yourself? So the three the takeaway points, I don't know, three or four, I have three, I think. Number one is and that to me is amazing man. I always say you know I want to say it for my family but if you don't do for you nobody's going to do for you because they're not as connected with, with it as you are so do for yourself now while you can and don't count on your kids or your family to do that for you so do charity yourself that's number one I learned from, from this one here take away the second takeaway for me is the past is not equal to the future unless you live in the past. It's not equal. The, the, the future and the past are two different things. Are you living in the future or are you living in the past? You gotta live now, plan for the future, but live in the now, planning for the future. So that the future, the past is not equal to the future unless you live there. The power is in the now. The present moment only is, is where you make any change. Okay, number three point, second to Allah, and with his permission and blessings, you are the designer of your own destiny. Allah destiny. You can design your own destiny with the permission and the blessings of Allah. So stop being a victim. Stop blaming others. Become a victor. Don't be a victim. And stop playing the blame card. And remember, every time you point the finger, you have three fingers pointing. Maybe. Those are the three main, you know, uh, takeaways I, I got from this for me. But you can pick your own. That's why I said, you know, take, take, get a pen and, and take some notes. But uh, okay. So now the three action steps, small action steps. You know, action steps. Not that we should in the mafic You're gonna start slow because momentum builds. So small action steps. I'm gonna say, wake up, look down. If you're above ground. Smile, it's a wonderful day. You're not on the wrong side of the grass. So just look down above ground, it's a beautiful day. Why not? You can decide if it's miserable or you can decide it's beautiful. Why not decide something that will push you forward? Why should you say, oh, people use language, well, like, I don't know, like he stabbed me in the back. Bullshit, nobody stabbed you in the back. Look in the back behind you, there's nothing. Oh, nice. I'm walking, there's a cloud over my head. Look up, man, there's no cloud. Why are you lying? People say, how are you feeling? Oh, same, same S-H-I-T, different day. Why do you say that? Why don't you lie? If you're lying, lie positively. Say, fantastic. 
because you know what? You're going to live up to it. Make your vocabulary powerful. Do not make it uh, negative. So how you feel? Alhamdulillah. Really mean it. Really say Alhamdulillah and mean it. Don't say just Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Come on, man. Really mean it. Say Alhamdulillah. Wallah, Alhamdulillah. We are 50. I'm 60 years old. I'm standing. I'm healthy. I don't have colostomy bag attached to my butt. I can walk. I can run. I can see. Be happy. Be happy. Mean it when you say Alhamdulillah. Really mean it. That is a big, big lesson. Think about these things when you when you say Alhamdulillah. Are you just saying it because it's a cliche? Well, do you really mean it? I really mean it when I say Alhamdulillah. So wake up, look down. It's a beautiful day. You're above ground. So that's enough. Say Alhamdulillah and mean it. Hey, number one. Number two, smile for no reason. Smile, no reason. And smile at everyone Come on, for no reason. People will think you're an idiot, but let me tell you who's the idiot. The, the face has 48 muscles, the face, 48 muscles. 43 muscles of, of those muscles are activated when you smile. So when you smile, even if it's fake smile, fake smile is better than sincere frown, by the way, you know? Fake smile is better than sincere frown because people don't know if you're smiling really or like, it doesn't matter. Once you see smiley face, you're uplifted whether you want to or not. Wallahi al-azim. So sm smile, 43 muscles out of the 48 muscles get activated when you smile. And that sends those hormones Serotonin, test, uh, not to say, serotonin, progesterone, uh, endorphin, all those feel good hormones are sent to your brain and it changes you it, whether you want to or not. If, because they, that study in an American Medical Journal, people that do copying in the office, they have a pencil in their teeth like this, you know? You know how they hold the pencil when they work in? They force by doing this, if you look at me, it's like a smile. The brain doesn't know the difference. They felt happier. They just serve These people that hold the pencil or pen, well, they are faking a smile. They feel good already. This is a study in the medical journal, American Medical Journal. So it is real. Once you activate the muscle, the brain doesn't know, doesn't care, fake or not fake. Fake smile is better than sincere rush. Smile for no reason and smile at everyone. You know what? You'll be shocked. Maybe they'll smile back at you. Because the people, you cannot slap somebody and then they, they, they'll slap you the first day. But after a while, you know, you become, it, becomes, yeah, it becomes real. So if you smile, they will smile back. It's a human nature. So that's, that's, that's the second lesson. Let's see. And also they say there's a saying, by the way, you're not fully dressed unless you wear a smile or you're not fully dressed until you wear a smile. So every day is a fresh start. Every day is a new opportunity to shine, a new chance to try again. When you do something, you have to mean it. Really, So when you do something, do it well. Muslims, that's the signature for Muslim. You have to. So that's it. But with that, I'm going to conclude, I guess. بس اللي يحكي لصفوان بيسأل صفوان إذا إذا بيحكي شيء شغلة يعلق عن تبع القراءة القرآن لأنه عملنا جروب بنلتقي يوم تس يوم الساعة الخميس خميس الساعة تسعة كل خميس مع دكتور حمود he's very patient he's very knowledgeable he's a sweetheart أنا أنا طشي بيقولوا الطشي كمان مو بس بيأكل مشي الطشي بعد دبل حسنات يعني so I'm I'm the worst in the group so do not feel if your reading is not up to par do not feel embarrassed because you know what you may decide two years from now to to finally start reading Quran, but the people that you, you know, that, that been practicing for two years, they'll, you, you really become bad. So, so please, Safan, if you have anything to say about this, about the Quran, about the Quran, about the Quran, what are you going to say? And I'm going to conclude with that. And I want to remind you before I conclude, we sent you to us that we have not sent you to us, and we have not sent you to us, and we have not sent you to us. Let's start with it, let's start with it. That's all I'm going to say. بالصوف يعني نايس يعني الواحد بيستفيد وبيتعلم وبيحسن